Welcome to Friday Night Not Quite Live, a Tilt You Showcase. My name is Adam Roberts, and I am the co-founder and producing artistic director of Tilt, and it is my pleasure to have you join us for our Winter Quarter Showcase. Throughout the next few minutes, I will be providing a visual narration of the playbill for tonight's showcase, which was created by our wonderful intern, Grace Ramston. On the first page, the text reads, live from Austin, it's Friday night, not quite live, a tilt you showcase. And there is a cityscape in the background. On page two, against a brick wall with a spotlight, the text reads, Tilt proudly presents Friday night, not quite live. Friday, March 11th, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, tiltperformance.org. Premieres online Friday, March 11th, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. This online showcase will be available to stream from March 11th through April 4th. On the next page, there are two screenshots of Zoom sessions that we have held with Tilt Company members and the text about Tilt U. Tilt U offers a weekly slate of classes on topics like acting, improv, theater history, creative writing, and even dramatic theory and dramaturgy, all at no cost to our company members. It's one more way Tilt is serving our mission in shattering disability stereotypes through inclusive theater. On the next page, we have a shot from our set of the production backstage. There are theatrical lights and a screen that's set up on stage that is bright red. The text reads, don't forget to purchase tickets for this performance. There is a photo of Dianara Garcia, Tilt Company member, and also a photo of our cast from The Secret Guardian. Those appear on other side of the Tilt Performance Group logo. And underneath that is the text that says, go to tiltperformance.org. By purchasing or registering for a free ticket, you are helping us shatter disability stereotypes through inclusive theater. And if you are able, we certainly do appreciate any contribution that you can make to our work that culminated in tonight's showcase. On the next page appears the roster of Tilt U classes from this quarter, along with headshots of each of the faculty members. Dramaturgy taught by Adam Roberts, Instant Theater taught by Miss Boy, Creative Writing taught by James Burnside, Resume Building taught by Amy Tarver, and On Camera Acting taught by April Patterson. The following page has credits that reflect the Tilt Company members who contributed to tonight's showcase. Tilt You Showcase, Saturday Night Not Quite Live, is brought to you by our incredible Tilt team members. Tilt Company members, Wes Tadachi, Kristen Gooch, Toby Altrabulsi, Ms. Boy, K. Love, Yadira Yarenga, Jordan Huerta, Blake Common, Gabriela Sol Rodriguez, Sam McDonald, Jarrett Sir, and Emily Kathleen. Headshots also appear of Kristen, Sam, Toby, and Gabby. The next page offers some special thanks. Tilt thanks all the amazing organizations and people who make Tilt You and this showcase possible. The National Endowment for the Arts, Athletes of the University of Texas, the Tilt U team, the Vinyl Lens, Tilt Board of Directors, sustaining members, donors, sponsors, and you. We could not do what we do without your support. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Tilt envisions a central Texas where people with disabilities flourish as artists through our mission to shatter disability stereotypes through inclusive theater. To achieve this mission, we are guided by our values of inclusive theater, 
artistic originality, meaningful employment, impactful education, strategic collaborations, and fun. On the next page, there's a headshot expertly taken by the Vinyl Lens, to whom we're very grateful, of our executive director, Amy Tarver. And Amy writes the following letter. Tilt Performance Group has changed so much since I joined in 2020. Tilt U has grown beyond our wildest expectations and our class offerings have remained refreshing and fun. This is due to the creativity and talent our company members express five days a week in Tilt U classes. Our Tilt U connection keeps our community together and thriving. Tilt U is guided by our values in skill building and impactful education. This is evident in the performance growth you will experience firsthand in this showcase. However, with my class offering of resume building this semester, we introduced another of Tilt's values, meaningful employment. We believe our company members are worth investing in to prepare them for artistic opportunities outside of Tilt and Tilt U. To build a more inclusive Central Texas community, preparing our team for future opportunities is paramount. Congratulations to the entire Tilt team on another showcase premiere. Thank you for your professionalism, commitment, and love for Tilt. Amy. And on our final slide, appear the words, enjoy the showcase. And we certainly hope you do. Welcome everyone to this quarter one showcase from Tilt U. This is our second Tilt U showcase ever. And I am excited to welcome you here to Friday night, almost live. And I'm sitting here with Ms. Boy, our Tilt U coordinator. Ms. Boy will be familiar to anyone who is familiar with Tilt. But I wanted to kick off this evening's performance hearing a little bit from Miss Boy, hearing about what it is that you do, and also a little bit about your perspective and introduction to this particular showcase. So Ms. Boy, tell us a little bit about your role as the Tilt You coordinator. My role is complicated, but my description is that I coordinate the classes that we run during the day and the rehearsals we run during the day for the Tilt performers, and it's called Tilt You. We try and make sure we have a balanced group of classes. So sometimes we have, a, we try to have one acting class that's about technique and skills or improvisation. Then we have one class that's about uh, something to do with the theater. Like um, we've done some on the history of the theater or roles in the theater or um, dramatology, how do you say it? Dramaturgy, that's it, dramaturgy. dramaturgy. Yes, which if you don't know what that means, that basically means what's the background of this play? What was going on in the world when it was made? Um, what, what were people like that really doing? What's the context of this play outside of the play? We have a writing group that's been going on every semester for, since, for two years. And we've discovered we've got some good playwrights and some uh, people have discovered that they're poets, which is great. Adam brings in really great uh, guest hosts to teach classes. We, we get to see our actors with different teachers and learning different things. And that's really cool too. And I think that it is probably surprising to some people who, especially people who knew Tilt prior to, you know, March of 2020 and pandemic lockdown, we had always talked about having an education sort of arm or branch of Tilt. And we were sort of forced into that in a way when we uh, when we were all basically found ourselves in lockdown and we were looking for ways to keep the company members together. And it was pretty amazing how we started off with saying, well, we could have a couple of classes a week maybe, and that would be a cool way for us to Zoom. And is Zoom even gonna be something that is feasible? Um, okay. And how quickly that snowballed into now for people who are watching may not realize that Monday through Friday at 1 p.m., our Tilt Company members have the opportunity to come together for an hour. Some partake in that every day, some partake in a couple of classes a week, but almost every week of the year, with a few exceptions, 
Tilt members come together for an hour every single day, Monday through Friday, to do all of those incredible things like you just talked about, whether it's improvisation, whether it's singing or movement. We've had a teacher in Sweden. We've had teachers all over the place and it's such a cool thing. And it has allowed us to also expand our company membership as well, because that's something that we had not been able to do before in terms of having company members from outside of Austin. Now we have company members from a wide range of places and it's super exciting. So could you tell us a little bit more about what to expect with this showcase that we're about to watch? Sure. I, I do want to add something to what you just said, though, is that one of the things that we've watched is that we've watched the actors grow as actors over the last two years. Yes. Um, their ability to do character development, because we've done classes on that, their ability to be present with their lines and to understand play structure, all of that stuff has just been stuff that they didn't ever get the chance to learn because they didn't go to drama school and um, often weren't in, in regular drama classes in high school. So it, it's been such a gift to give that to our actors. So this showcase, a number of different themes, the, but the overall theme is, a, is the theater and aspects of the theater. And we started off with the theme of your class, um, which was the um, myths and legends around theater and so superstitions. And so uh, your play came out of that. Then um, we had a, a new teacher who, a, April, who did um, improvisation and imagination, helping the actors not just to look at the words, but to imagine themselves there, to imagine what they would do, and then from that do some improvisation. And so we have a, a section that comes out of that class. Um, my class was instant theater, and we we did one week of exercises, and then the second week we started talking about the project, and we were going to do the um, the idea of what happens when you go for an audition. Like, how can you audition? What what could go wrong in audition? And we talked about it as a group for one session. And then one of our new members, um, Yadira, went away and got inspired and wrote a whole play. And it's that so was true. Yeah. And so we um, focused on that play. Um, and she came up with some really crazy characters. And then the actors took them and expanded them and really dove into them, which was great. You know, I loved it. You'll see actors doing things you've never seen them do before. Um, and in your play, you'll see one actor who doesn't normally get monologues do a whole monologue. Yes. Which is really, really great. That he wrote himself. Him, he, him and I worked on it, and, and basically it's his words that, that we made into a monologue. And then there's a section from the writers group who wrote monologues about behind the scenes, people who you don't normally see on stage, who are, I mean, Theatre isn't just about the actors, there's all these other people involved and we wanted to represent that. And so the monologues represent that. Well, Ms. Boy, I could not be more grateful to have you as a friend, as a colleague, as a company mm -hmm. member of Tilt. And I just think that every time we do something with Tilt, it is unique and it is different. And we set out to do that, but I'm so proud of what we have all as a collective company been able to accomplish and move forward during the pandemic and before that as well. So yeah. I think the light that shines behind you is always on at mm -hmm. Tilt. And I hope that everyone enjoys Friday night, almost live. Hi, Amy Targer here, the executive director for Tilt Performance Group. I'm really excited to be here today to chat with you about one of Tilt U's newest class offerings, resume building and auditions. So before an actor can even play a role, they've got to get into an audition room to audition for that role. And we discovered that for external opportunities outside of Tilt, we really needed to assist our company members in creating those resumes and providing those headshots uh for them to get into those rooms to really engage in those opportunities so we came together as a team we uh, found everyone's experiences inside and outside of tilt comprised that together and then the entire class culminated in a wonderful headshot shoot 
Uh, so we all came together and uh, we really want to thank the Vinyl Lens with Bobby Cox for really taking uh, the wonderful, wonderful headshots of our company members. I can't wait for you to see the results and I can't wait for our tilters to get into those audition rooms. The ghosts must be happy today. Ms. Boy, remember to leave the light on for them. Yeah, they sure do feel welcome in this theater. Well, when we remember to leave their light on. Do you remember how mad the Phantom was when Ms. Boy left it off last week? Oh yeah, and that time the other one turned the entire set upside down out of spite. Hey y'all, what's up? We were just talking about how happy the ghosts must be because Miss Boy left the light on for them. Oh, that's all a bunch of baloney. Yeah, ghosts don't exist. Shh, don't upset the ghost. Ghosts are just in movies. They're created for fun. Oh, this is very bad. Everyone, take cover. Oh, please. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet we're not even allowed to say, <gasps> Mac. Don't do it. Beth. No. Now you have to go outside and run around the theater three times. Eh, we already got our workout in today. I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> It's the sound of the curse. The Grim Reaper haunts us. Oh, please. The Grim Reaper does not exist. He's just something made up to make death sound cool and exciting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, you two. He was only whistling. It's just a prank, bro. You're never supposed to whistle in a theater. Bad luck. Don't you all realize that these silly superstitions are really there to keep everyone safe? We turn on the so-called ghost light so we don't stumble in the dark when we come into a dark theater. And back in the day, they didn't whistle because that was the cue for dropping the curtain. <clears throat> yeah. Be gone before someone drops a curtain on you, too. <laughs> That's not funny. Oh. Hey man, bro, what's wrong with you? It's, it's the curse. He's dead. That's what whistling gets you. What's that? Where's that ringing coming from? I'm sure I hooked everything up correctly. Okay, Frank, start from the beginning and check everything. No, 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 no. Why can't I find it? Not again. Can't have repeated the last so. Last time, Gaston Walter got drunk on wine at the church chili eating contest before I even got to the theater. So we put on the wrong soundtrack. We had, I'm not yet dead, playing for the opening night of this type of horse. He didn't even notice until Charlotte burst into tears halfway through her disastrous rendition of Summer That Screen. But still, he couldn't find the right musical, even with the help of the first house manager, Edward, who burst into the sound booth to see what was going on because by that time, there was more audience members in the lobby at the bar than there were in the auditorium. Walter just kept trying any CD he could get his hands on, hoping each one was the right one. The poor actors had to deal with a different soundtrack for every musical number in the first half, everything from Oklahoma to Sweeney Todd. When his body decided the chili had been in there long enough, Walter, 
had to run to the bathroom. Edward discovered Ellis had a horse to in the middle of the chair where Miss Boyd had left it. Turns out Walter had been sitting on it all the time. You'd think the night couldn't get any worse, well, it could. When Walter staggered back to the sound booth, he accidentally knocked on the house announcement mic, and the remaining audience was treated to the sound of Walter pulling out missing gun raspberries for 20 minutes. I was at home with a sinus infection, but Edward, who'd had to apologize and refund everyone, called me in to deal with the mess. And in the end, the place stunk so bad, we had to cancel the second night so we could fumigate the place. <sighs> Since then, I've made sure I never get sick, walk the dark twice a day, and even started a vegan diet for a while. But the side effects of all those things were too dangerous. Hopefully, for the love of Oklahoma, things go right this time. Our public are still mad that we bought the rights to Love Never Dies last year instead of the original phantom that everybody loves. Hey, Frank. I, I didn't know anyone else was here. I always like to clean out the energy in the theater before opening night. <laughs> Figure we need all the help we can get, right? Oh, you look stressed, man. I hope I didn't disturb you. You want me to do you too? Eh, yeah, no thanks, sign. Oh my God. I think it's actually working. I'm calming down, getting calmer, less agitated. It's like I'm looking into the eyes of the metaphorical serpent. Ah, life is good. Ah, ah, oh, wow. There, better? Look at you, your aura is positively glowing. Well, I better go. I'm gonna do the backstage. I'll see you later, Frank. How does something like that work? How does it relax my mind and body like that? Soundways burr to saw me watching away my attention. Maybe a little moat starting my headphones while I work will make it easier for me to stay focused. Why can't life be more simple and feel like this all the time? Hmm. That's what made you the perfect guide dog. You are very kind, sweet, and loving. Yeah, but that dog's getting on my last nerves. Where's Uno the Labrador dog when you need her? Uno? The Labrador ghost? Pretty does exist, you know. Oh, Dencha. <laughs> you have such a vivid imagination. It's true. Okay, if you say so, let's go. Oh no, did someone turn the light off? And who in the stars decided to put that pole in the middle of the stage? Hello? I'm sorry, mom. I forgive you. Just don't let that ghost get you out of whack. Woo! Go away, ghost, before I get out of a Labrador ghost to bang your leg off. Woo! Woo! See, I told you, it was Miss Boy the whole time. Just get rid of all the energy dust bunnies left over from the last production. I heard there was some tension in the cast. Oh, good. I've been feeling kind of on edge from all of these bad vibes. I know that feeling. So it was you who put that ghost light there. Yeah, it's there every night. It's important to keep the spirits happy and the actors safe. 
You all seem really stressed out. Do you know what you need? You need, a, not, need to bathe in the calming sound waves. Wait, we forgot about Blake. Someone call an ambulance. <coughs> you all are so gullible. More like delusional, as I call it. I told you it was all superstition. <laughs> you know that's not Miss Boy. Roof, roof. Don't panic. Roof, roof. Ah! <laughs> Time for my checks, everyone. Almost live from Tilt. It's, it's Friday, Friday night. night. for hidden talents the local community theater company is auditioning for the final two roles in their annual production of the sound of music director carl elliott reports unfortunately we've lost many of our regular actors over the last couple of years but we were very excited about our cast this year and thrilled to introduce our new actors to our audience. However, I found out yesterday that two days before rehearsals were scheduled to start, the real life father and daughter cast as Baron Von Trapp and Liesel Von Trapp have both tested positive for COVID and decided to self-quarantine on their family compound for at least a month. We hope to find some hidden talents at these last minute auditions. All welcome, no experience necessary. These are singing parts, so be prepared to wow us with a musical number. When? 6 p.m. this evening. Where? Stratford on Royal Grande Community Center. Sign ups available at the door. Where is everyone? Where is? I don't have time for this. Where's Charlotte? Where's my assistant director? Charlotte, Charlotte? Uh, Yvette, where, where is Charlotte? Where is she? Um, I don't know, sir. Would you like for me to call her again? No, I've called her twice already. We, we gotta get started. I can't get started without my assistant hello, director. Hello, hello, hello. If y'all miss me already. I ran out of coffee at home, so I had to pick up an espresso. Then I had to drop my kids off, and you know. You're five minutes late. There's a line of people outside the door. Can we get started already? Of course. Let's get the show on the road. Who's first? Uh, Yvette, please bring in the first person. Olga, we're ready for you now. I'm ready. Wait, where is everybody? Everybody? Yeah, the audience was a fundraiser. I was told I'd be seen in front of a very large crowd. That was last week, darling. This is the audition. Oh, I'm confused. What song are you singing today? Well, I'll be singing my own composition, Closer to the Heart. That's not in the sound of music. I don't sing show tunes. I only sing original blue songs. <sighs> Well, sweetness, then you're not a good candidate for this play, are you? 
We're only wanting to hear songs by Mr. Hammerstein and Mr. Rogers, but baby girl, I know you will shine brighter elsewhere. But, but, Slammy Daddy! Woo! Yvette, next person, please. And please make sure that they know this is an audition. Margarita. Okay, it's your turn. Oh, oh no, I am too nervous. I think I could go Margarita, you can do this. Just relax. Take a deep breath and everything will be okay. I'll try. Mother really wants me to be in the production this year because my sister left for drama school and mom says a member of our family has been in the show for the last 30 years. So this year, it's up to me. I don't mean to be rude, but do you think you're ready to replace Baron Von Trapp? Oh no, I'm auditioning for Lee, so everyone says I sound like a girl. I have a very high voice. Okay, we'll say we're an inclusive production. So ginger blonde casting it is. The stage is yours. What song are you singing today? <laughs> oh, bless his heart. Well, that's just perfect. That's just perfect. Yvette, Yvette. Absolutely, sir. So, oh, our next candidate does seem to have a lot of experience, sir. Okay. Josephine uh, Monte Diaz Fernandez. Josephine Monte Diaz Fernandez. Right. Sorry. Es mi turno ahora. Sí, señora. Ma'am, do you speak English? Yo no hablo English ni francés. Okay. Puro español. Um, okay. They are ready for you, ma'am. Ta-da! Aquí estoy. José Gino Montoya Díaz Fernández. Encantada de conocerlos. Um, what? What song are... Monica! Monica! Está bien, señorita. Doctor! Doctor! La paciente se está muriendo. No song -o? Awkward. <laughs> Senora, venga, gracias por venir. They will are blah with you if you get the part. Que tengan un gran día. Bye-bye. Shall I call the next person? Oh, please. Natanya, you're next. Come on, no wasting time. Certainly, darling. You are deaf, but also love, love it. Thy family. I trained as a dancer, you know, actress, dancer, and professional psychic. That's me. Hurry up. Okay, okay, okay. No need to get your aura in a twist. I'm coming. If music be, be the food of love, Play on. Give me excess of it. That's suffocating. The appetite may sicken and so die. Uh, are you not going to sing for us? No, I die, sir. I am a student of the sweet swan of Avon. I idolize his work. I only perform minor life on the works of the bard, the great William Shakespeare. Next. Thank you for coming. Good night, madam. Really? Shakespeare at Windydale. Oh, ooh. A William Shakespeare fanatic. Carl, <laughs> Elliot, where did you get these people? <sighs> Next person, please. I'm on it, sir. Bradley, you're up next. Oh, excellent. Uh, hold on, ma'am. I just got to set up my smoke machine here. <laughs> oh, you're serious. I'm pretty sure there is no smoke machines in The Sound of Music. All you need is your beautiful voice and your guitar. Oh, right on, ma'am. 
So are you, what are you singing for us today? I'm going to sing my interpretation of Elderweiss. Hallelujah. Righto, party on. To na 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 Elderweiss. To na 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 Elderweiss. To na 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 Elderweiss. To na 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 Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, that's that's quite enough. Um, how about uh, without the guitar? Just uh, just your voice. Ah. Elderweiss, <clears throat> Elderweiss, 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 Elderweiss. Um, thank Alder you. Yes, thank that you. That was coming. definitely an interesting original interpretation. Good effort. Thank you for coming. Don't call us, we'll call you. Excellent, dude. So, does that mean do I get the part? That's the firm no. Oh, dang it. Oh, Carl, why don't we just call it a day, okay? This is ridiculous. Who are these people? I know you were looking for adult actors, but maybe you can finally consider my kids and cast them. Mabel can do wonders with their stage makeup. We've been running lines for months and they're quite talented if I do say so myself. Are they here ready to audition? Um, no, they're not. They have to work. They run the drama club at the elementary school. Listen, I know your kids are great actors and all, but they can't be a part of our production if they're not here ready to audition. You wouldn't want me to be accused of nepotism, would you? Yvette, is there anyone else? Oh, yes, indeed. I'm on it, sir. Brittany, we're ready for you now. About time. And just call me Flawless. That's my stage name, darling. <coughs> um, my name is Flawless, and I'm auditioning for the lead role of Maria. You, there. Stage manager, person, whatever. Bring me a bottle of water, will you? Oh, and make sure it's a glass bottle. No, I'm sorry. But it's in my writer. Um, Miss Flawless, did you say you were auditioning for Maria? Well, of course. This diva knows what she wants. Climb every mountain, search. High and low, high and low. Okay, so okay, okay, low. okay, okay, okay. Wrong king, I can go higher. Oh, 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 oh. Will you listen to me, woman? We've already cast Maria. We're uh, auditioning for Liesel. Oh, flawless doesn't perform in anyone's shadow. Kick the imposter to the curb. Cast me as the lead. She can be my. No, thank you. Ah, uh, but don't you know who I am? Who are you? I am flawless. And one day I'm going to be famous and live in Beverly Hills, California. You'll all be sorry you didn't give me this break when I'm accepting my Oscar and my Emmy. Get out of my theater. You'll be hearing from my manager. Carl Elliott, are you okay? I am done. Just done. If that let everyone know that auditions have to be postponed for the day. There is nobody else, sir. Well, what in the world? We did post those flyers, didn't we, Charlotte? I put them everywhere they needed to be, Carl Elliott. And I posted them online and in the church newspaper. I'm so sorry. If we only had a backup plan. <laughs> Raindrops on roses and whiskers on kittens. Bright copper kettles and warm woolen mittens. 
Ma'am. Ma'am. Oh, leave her alone, Carl Elliot. She's working. I'm sorry, sir. I thought y'all left. Do you need anything? I just wanted to tell you you had uh, have a beautiful voice. <laughs> Whatever. Would you consider being a part of our, our production? You'd make a great Liesl. <laughs> Me, sir? <laughs> no, sir. I got a lot of work to do. Besides, mom says, singing belongs in church, girl. You can't make a living in the arts. You need to be getting yourself a real job. One with a good pension. And this is my job. Keeping this place nice for you artistic types. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got a lot of work to do before my union pension kicks in. I'm well. sorry, Carl Elliott. Not everyone with a good voice has star quality. Well, that's that. Now what are we going to do? I know. How about my kids? They're almost off book. Janice makes a great Liesl. And Gregory has been working with a vocal coach to play the Baron. He's developing quite the German accent. I guess we don't have any choice at this point. Just make sure they're here on time for the first rehearsal on Monday. Oh, yes, Carl Elliott, I'll make sure that happens. Yes. Thank you all for making this audition chaotic for Carl Elliott. Y'all are wonderful actors, but we won't be needing any of you. I'm proud to announce that my super talented children, Gregory and Janice, will be playing the roles of Liesl and the Baron this year. I can honestly say, I've never seen an audition set quite like yours. You were perfect, just what I needed. Adios, amigos. And now, did you know that in 1985, I was an assistant director on Broadway? Shaw's Heartbreak House at the Circle in the Square Theater. John Malkovich was the director. Raul Julia played Major Sarnoff. And now, now, I ate lox and bagels with Bernadette Peters in Carnegie Deli. And now, when did the theater have to start meaning something? And why can't we just entertain people? I turned my theater over to, to this bunch. And now I got to spend money making accommodations wheelchair ramps, an audio description, an ESL interpreter. And now it's virtual theater. How am I supposed to make any money? You know how I make money? I sit at a computer all day tapping away. And no, I'm not a playwright. I'm a grant writer. I write the most boring stuff you can imagine about the amazing art that, that's presented at my theater. It's always such a load of, and I beg for money, like for accommodations. I guess it works, they give me money. In some ways, the pandemic was a boom. The grant writing was short and sweet, and then I waited and money. Phoebes and Crips, the feeble-minded and cripples. Phoebes and Crips, that's what my mother called them. 
she was a good lady, volunteered at an inner city Head Start for years. You'd think she'd know better. It was the 60s. Who knew people with disabilities had rights? And, and now I'm one of them. Hearing loss, practically deaf. And the show, I, I like the show. It's funny and, and entertaining and it's, it's important. It says something important about the human condition. And now, on with the show! Hey, Drake. Yes, everything is coming together nicely tonight. We've got volunteers to cover the costume changes and all the costumes have Velcro and large zippers to make them more accessible, especially for our blind actors like Janelle, who said she struggles with buttons. Oh, and I've made sure to assign a volunteer to work with our guys who struggle with transitions. Hold that thought. Ron, what's the rule about eating while you are in your costume? Where did you get that chocolate ice cream? What freezer? Drake, do you know anything about a freezer in the men's dressing room? No? It's in the concession booth? How did he? Oh, never mind. It's too late now. Ron, you can't go on stage in front of a full house with chocolate ice cream down your shirt. No, sir, there is no time to wash it. <sighs> because that was your five minute call. Sorry, dude, no can do. You'll have to wear the pink one. It's on the rack with all your other costumes. Carlos, Carlos. I know you're in charge of props, but could you help Ron, please? He needs to find his pink shirt and change out of that white one. Oh, and please, don't let him hang it back on the rack. Make sure that it goes in tonight's dirty laundry. Will you? Yes, for the first scene. Thank you, you're the best. What? Yes, Ron, I know the pink shirt is your party shirt. For the party scene. And there is no party 
in the first act. It will be okay. No, you don't have to ask the director. I'm in charge of the costumes. And I say the pink shirt is better than the dirty white one. Now, go. As I was saying, if I put a lot of work and effort into these costumes, everything else should go smoothly. Janelle, I want to check. Do you know you are wearing one red and one green shoe? Oh, no, no, don't cry. You're going to ruin your makeup. Is Taylor helping you with your costume? No. She's not here. Don't worry. I'll help you out. Great. Apparently, we've lost a volunteer for tonight. <laughs> no. D don't worry, I'll help both Guadalupe and Janelle with their costume changes. How long until we go up? Ah, shoot, I better get going. I think I just saw Imani wearing the wrong hat again. Break the leg. Imani, I know your favorite color is pink, but that is still not your hat. So here's the thing. I originally wrote this play, my local community theater. Then I saw this call for disabled playwrights. And I thought, that's me. I'm autistic. That counts. Finally, something I qualify for. Then I got the email from Dylan Jones, the director, telling me not only had I won, but they wanted to stage my play at a festival. However, after this, I'm not sure playwriting is the thing for me. Let me show you what happened. Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. Blah, 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 blah. The final scene, I mean, the rehearsal went great for that, don't you? Blah, 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 blah. Wait, what? You want me to rewrite the last scene? Blah, 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 blah. But we open tonight. I know everyone likes a happy ending. The guy gets the girl and they sing with the chorus and the couple rides off into the sunset as the audience applauds. However, that's not always how it is. That's not how real life is, and it's fine. Blah, 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 blah. The producer wants the ending changed too. Fine, fine, fine. So, yeah, there I was out on the loading dock with 30 minutes to rewrite the whole ending of my play, which totally changed my original points, by the way. And the actors only had an hour to learn their new lines. I have to say, they took it in stride. They were brilliant. And I know, the director is king, but this was the 75th rewrite they had me do. Every day I was there. I was waiting for the next shoe to drop. I 
couldn't do anything right this guy. The most annoying thing is, well, if I'm being honest, the final script was better than my original, which kind of sucks not, because that's why I'm being honored tonight with this Young Writers Award. So thank you, Mr. Jones. Couldn't have done without you, probably. <laughs> All right, guys, welcome to Imagination and Improv. We're going to have some fun today. You're going to take us on a journey in your imagination. And the theme of this story is called Cross the Bridge, right? So we have to, the only requirements is that you have to leave a space urgently because something is urgently, you know, coming after you cross this very thin bridge or you can make it a you can make it whatever you want just know that it's just the width of your foot so you have to take one foot at a time across this bridge to the place of safety that is your only restrictions your only requirements and what i want you guys to do is take us on a journey and i want you to tell us what you're running from where you're running to what is above you? And, and the other thing is you have to be really, really high off the ground. So I don't care what's below you, but you got to tell us what's below you. What do you smell? What do you see? Is it light? Is it dark? Is it a magical place? Take us on a journey of where you are going, coming from, where you are going to, and everything you see around you. And I want you to be as descriptive as possible so that your classmates and I can go on this journey with you. Oh my gosh, can you believe what happened to me yesterday? I was sitting down in my balcony. Deisha, of course, was inside, but I was outside in the balcony in our cruise. And of course, you know, you could smell the ocean. It's a very peaceful day. It's not, it wasn't too cold, but it wasn't too hot. It was just right. And I was just having a peaceful moment. Daisha was off duty. She was off her harness, you know, sleeping on the bed. And then this lady comes into my room. And, and she comes into your room. And so do you need to get away from her? Yes, she finds me in the balcony and she's like, you need to give me my earrings oh man that's really and threatening like, especially when you get it I'm all right like, so we need we need to get away from her what do we do to get away from her i was like i don't have your earrings so then she started like strangling me and i'm like okay i really need to get away from this woman and then i heard a voice saying climb up the building climb up the boat Oh, okay. So, so there's, a, there's a boat all the way to the top. And this voice said, on the right side, there is a bridge. But in order to get to the bridge, you have to swing off the branches. So then I have <laughs> to hold on to these branches and I have to swing towards the bridge. And finally, I'm at the bridge, but this bridge is like very, very narrow and it's very old and, you know, it makes a lot of noise. But you and still got to walk across. Trying to, you know, trying to cross, trying not to lose balance. And then, like, I almost fell off. And then here comes Daisha, the unicorn. And grabs me and then we fly to the other side yay i love it Gosh, i didn't even have to uh, say anything you took us on a whole journey and you use all of like your emotions that was so cool <laughs> <laughs> okay so let's do um reminds me of and this time you guys are pulling from your own experiences so you get to share what different things remind you of and we're going to do two words. So you'll say this, you'll take whatever word you're given, say this reminds me of this, 
And that reminds me of this. So I guess technically three words. You're taking the words you're given and you're adding two more words. And that word will be passed to someone else. Ice can remind you of? Baskin Robbins. And Baskin Ooh. Robin reminds you of? Rocky Road. Good job. Rocky Road ice cream. Sam, Rocky Road ice cream reminds you of? It makes me think of those peanut butter milkshakes that my dad used to like to make for me. Oh, I love that. So peanut butter milkshakes remind you of your dad. So your dad reminds you of? My, my dad reminds me of, uh, of, of just doing some, some awesome things together. So time, time spent, family time. Yeah. Is that, can I say that? Okay. So family time reminds you of what, you dear? Vacation. Vacation. And vacation reminds you of? Museums. Museums. I love that. Miss Boy, museums remind you of what? Um, being bored. Uh, <laughs> and bored, boredom reminds you of? <laughs> getting in trouble. Trouble. <laughs> getting in trouble. Hmm, Gabby, have you gone? You haven't gone yet, have you? Getting in trouble. That's something I rarely do, but okay. Um, getting in trouble reminds me of long hours trying to figure out what to do because usually if I get in trouble, I get grounded and then grounded means no screens. So yeah. Grounded reminds you of what? Being not very happy. So sad. Yeah. Sad. Okay. Sad reminds you of what, West? Uh, a cousin of mine. A cousin of mine. Your cousin. I like that. And your cousin reminds you of what? My cousin uh, reminds me of uh, the uh, fun times that I went through. Fun. Uh, I like it. All right, Jared, are you ready? When you think of the word fun, what does it make you feel or think of? Happy. Happy. Happy it, excitement. I didn't come back here. <laughs> Where's he going? I hear, I hear, it, I hear his, oh, oh his that's what, oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> adopting this little guy after I lost my precious ginger. Hey. Uh, yeah. can, we, can we use your dog for your next word, dog? Um, okay, so dog reminds me of loyal because dogs are so loyal and lovable. I have a very lovable, loyal dog. And loyal makes me feel excited about all the fun I can have with the loyal people in my life. Mm. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Eating ice cream. There you go. <laughs> so I'll just introduce us to the, to the audience. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Channel 8 News, where we have an urgent story that's happening right now and um, Wes and Kay, can you tell us what, what is happening in the world right now that we need to share urgently? Let's start with you, Wes. Wes, where can, you, where can we start with this story? What is happening right now? Breaking news. Uh, right, breaking news, everyone. Uh, as you can see, uh, everyone's trying to evacuate since there's a whole bunch of uh, nuclear bombs like coming in on our way here, so. Uh, what do you think, Kay? I don't know. When I was a kid, they taught me to climb under my desk, but I'm not sure that's going to work. So it looks like some of the, the methods, of which one do you think? We've been taught lots of things if something like this happened. Um, can you give us a little insight on what you think will work the best? Uh, I'd say, like, since uh, it's relatively contagious with uh, this uh, nuclear fallout that we're dealing with, uh, Probably the uh, old fashioned way would be heading into shelters, maybe. Well, I'm just not sure how that works, but I think there should be shelters with plenty of desks. Plenty of desks in the shelters. The I agree. The bomb is coming. Right. Well, all of this talk about nuclear bombs is making me really hungry. Dear, dear what are you cooking in the, in the kitchen today? Okay, so I am cooking caldo de pollo. You have to have your fillet chicken. And then you put it in there and then you need some vegetables. You have to cut some, some cauliflower, some carrots. That looks so yummy. Peppers. That looks 
super yummy. And it looks like your sous chef, Gabby, has something else going on on her own. Gabby, can you tell us about what you're cooking over there? Well, today I thought we would make some special sort of brownies. All right, brownies. Everybody loves brownies. Yeah. But these are not any kind, of, any kind of brownies. These are hot chocolate brownies. So kind of like hot chocolate chip cookies. You just, they're hot chocolate cookies, you know, like you eat them and they taste like a Mexican hot chocolate, like spicy. So it's, these are spicy brownies. Spicy, sweet and spicy. My goodness. Thank you for bringing that to us. We love sweet and spicy together. It's the best combination. But you know what? I think this is the perfect thing to eat while it's outside. The weather looks a little, little weird today. West and and uh, Jared, can you tell us about what's happening outside with the weather? Outside of uh, the nuclear fallout that we were discussing. <laughs> what, what is the weather? So it's going to impact this nuclear fallout and is it going to blow my way? Is it going to blow anybody else's houses? Yes, we need Sam and Jerry to tell us about the weather, how it's going to affect us. The weather doesn't, doesn't look good, and I'm a little scared and nervous right now because a hurricane's about, about, about to hit where my friend works, and I'm afraid to, 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 I have to go and try and find her so I can get her out so that it doesn't, so, so she doesn't get killed by it. As you notice that behind me, there is some wind going on for me in the end this way. So, with me, with that being said, there's some gusts of wind coming through. As you can hear it, it's totally coming through. So, I can't help it at wonder if I should, we should take shelter. So, everybody, make sure to take shelter because tonight it's definitely going to be more windy, more stormy, more water, and the precipitation out here is crazy. If you can't hear it, there's tons of wind. Yeah, Jordan! Jordan, it looks like you're blowing away a little bit. Are you blowing away? Out of just hang on a little bit longer. Don't blow. Okay, oh. I'm hanging on to something right now. If you can't All tell. Right. Oh, All gosh. right. Yeah. So, so Jared, he it looks like a hurricane. What do, what can we expect? What type of like is it? Lots of rain or wind? What can we expect with this hurricane that's blowing in? Cats and dogs from the sky. Cats and dogs from the sky, uh, brimstone fire, mass hysteria. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Miss Boy, what do you want to share? Is there anything you want to share? Is there anything going on with the sports over there with you? It appears that the whole crowd is running from the stadium right now. Uh, there was some kind of alarm, uh, but, but I hate those things. So I took them off my phone. So I really I don't know what it is. But apparently, oh, no, it says up here. Game stopped due to nuclear fallout and hurricane. Find safety now. I gotta go. Oh, <laughs> and in good job, Winner guys. Thank one. you so much for playing with me today. I've had the best time with you guys on Mondays, and it was such an honor to spend this time with you guys. Thank y'all so much for playing. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Really nice to be Bye. with you. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 <laughs> Bye.